Okay, this morning for props, it's always pretty much the same. Your blankets, um, a belt, I'm not sure if we're gonna use a belt, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, blocks, uh, bolsters are really great. And but and we, we can almost make a bolster out of blankets or cushions of some kind. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And we will use either a chair, a wall, or a counter or something like that. So uh, let's start our practice this morning. I'm so glad to see you all, and I hope you had a nice, um, a nice day yesterday. Draw your torso up. So let's start by being as tall as we can in our sitting position, which is Sukhasana. Um, and if, as we're sitting here, take your hands beside you onto your supporter of the floor, whatever is best for you, and just take your elbows down, your armpits up and your belly button, try to lengthen it. So the belly button lengthens down toward the pubis, up toward the ribs. And then puff your armpits even a little more so that when you do that, you draw your shoulder blades down the back body. That, that's the feeling, is the shoulder blades are, are a little softer. And that if I have my hands on the, on the top of your shoulders and I just gently roll the skin, from the collarbones over the shoulders down the back body. That's the general direction of our torso stand. Up from the pubis toward the very tops of our shoulders, over the back, down toward the buttocks. So now, hold your abdomen really in, lift your chest even more and lean slightly forward and take the buttock skin and adjust it. You know how to make yourself feel even side to side. So that when you sit back up, it, you're just completely and totally even on both buttocks and both sit bones. Lift your tailbone up. We don't sit on our spine. So lift your tailbone up, lift your collarbones up, lift your heart up, draw your elbows down. So we're pretty tall now. I think you would feel your abdomen quite, quite um, engaged. That would be the word active. Um, and really lift your chest up even more. And then take your hands down to the floor just to create this separation between the torso and the arms for one second and turn your thumbs back. When you turn your thumbs back, that's another way to engage the back body so that the shoulder blades go down and then the latissimus dorsi, those muscles on the back ribs, move in. Bring your hands together in prayer. And when you do bring your hands together in prayer, then try to get your thumbs a little lower. Uh, as opposed to here, which is kind of the um, choir child uh, prayer. Then you bring your hands down, 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 down. At a certain point, you have to do a little more to broaden across your chest because when you have your hands lower, there's a tendency to draw your shoulder blades uh, away from the back body a little bit. So you can't let that happen. You sit up as tall as you can, shoulder blades down. Close your eyes, relax your face, soften your jaw, and start this process of going inside, away from your day, and inside to your body, to your mind, to your muscles, to your um, spine, to your arms, legs, everything. We're just going inside. And it's so different to be completely aware of how your body feels than the norm where we're just too busy to worry about that. So lift your chest up, lift your spine up, let your elbows descend, have your head just right over your um, neck and your neck right in line with your spine. So right now you should feel like your head, if you could imagine this, your head in the back is lined up for, with your shoulders, with your sacrum, but your lower back is curved and the neck is a little bit curved. So draw the elbows down, lift the chest up. And now bow your head to your heart. Bring your hands down to your thighs. Open your eyes in front of your shins. Bring your head back up. Now let's straighten our legs and cross them the other way. So now we're in, the, and once you do that, probably you need to readjust your buttocks. 
because we never want to go to um, a sitting position where we feel like we're leaning. That, that, and although we probably do that during the day, but we don't do that in yoga. Now put your hands over your knees now and use your, um, use your hands uh, to help you lift your armpits up through right up straight. So it is now as more as the armpits. So the neck is going to stay just very relaxed and comfortable over your spine. And you're going to draw your chest through your armpits. It will maybe trying that and holding your abdomen back to do that. And then take your hands and stretch them up if you can. Now, if this bothers your neck or your shoulders, let's not do that. You know, you can have your hands down like this. You know, this is a good thing. I sometimes have to do that myself. But but if you can bring your arms up even wider or even closer, this is all in your own um, awareness and experience. And I think that's one thing that's good about yoga. If your neck bothers you, you know it. So draw your uh, thumbs up, your middle fingers up, your little fingers up, the palms of your hand, open them toward each other like they are, um, like they're open-minded. Like you can feel the palms of your hands and then turn your thumbs forward and keep your chest really lifted as you bring your arms down. So it's like your arms float down and your chest is lifting up through all that. And now uh, let's straighten our legs for a minute and just look at our legs as we do. And just looking at our knees as our knees kind of indicate to us a lot of our hips. So you can look at your knees and today, Maybe your knees know what they should do. Uh, mine seem to. I don't know. It's a miracle. That's all I can tell you. My knees are correct. And, but if yours aren't, you lean onto one buttock and you take the hamstring flesh from the back of your leg and move it sideways. And because it really the knee action is coming from the hip. And then we lean onto the other buttock and we take the, the hamstring flesh, you know, right in the back and just broaden it. It's not, it's not a big aggressive action. It's just a little bit of minor adjustments. Beautiful. Now we're all going to do the same thing and I'm going to mirror you. So you're going to bring your left foot in first for Siddhasana. So we're going to draw our left foot. I'm mirroring you. And you're going to put your foot down so that the front of the foot, the top of the foot is on the floor and the heel is right in the center of your torso. So now, let's just be really clear about this. If your knee bothers you on this side, don't take it so close to your torso. Experiment with that a little bit. But if you're okay with that, then draw it as close as you can. Now, for the moment, we're going to take our other foot and we're just going to put the heel in front of our ankle on the other side. So we're not going to line our feet up quite yet on top of each other. We're gonna try this. And, and then we're gonna to try to be as level as we can on our buttocks, which means you have to make some uh, adjustments probably. And then put your hands on your thighs just for a moment and take, well, this is what I've been doing and I really recommend this idea. So take your hands on the top of your thighs and just, there's a place where if you push down, you can feel the skin moving toward the knees. Uh, we do want that. We want the skin moving from the top crease of the leg toward the knees. Uh, but sometimes it helps to feel the action of the skin moving because sometimes you don't feel that. So let's try to feel that. And then lift your chest up. And now only if this works for you, only if it's good, you're gonna take that front foot and you're going to lift it up and you're going to put the heels in line with each other and tuck the right toes into your left calf, essentially. But that's only if your knees can tolerate that or you don't like it. And then again, we're going to take our hands onto our thighs and just the skin is going toward the knees. And also the knees should be even. So if you need a lift under one of your knees, you get that. And then open your chest up as high as you can and take your hands and turn them forward, the palms forward and touch your thumb and, uh, and first finger together. And then the other fingers just roll over the kneecap. And then you lift from there. And actually you can use your fingers over the kneecap 
to help you lift your chest much as we used our palms turned down over our knees. Same thing. So you, you need sometimes a little pressure on another part of your body to awaken uh, the third part. And the third part here is the front of our body and we're trying to lift it up as tall as we can. Keep your head neutral. Don't lift your head up, don't drop your head down. Keep your neck, just your ears and your shoulders are equidistant. Both sides of your neck equally long. And now you should feel your triceps engaging. Your triceps are engaging. Now close, you're not closing your eyes. You're looking down. Uh, sometimes we do close our eyes, but we're not doing that right now. The real pose, you look toward your heart and your eyes are soft. They're not closed, but they're soft and they're looking down and they're looking toward your heart. And of course, we can't see our hearts literally, but that is the direction in which we're gazing and metaphorically, we're looking toward our heart and we're trying to connect our brain to our body through our heart. So just being as tall as you can, breathe. Now, just turn your hands down and now straighten your legs. So now you're gonna get some feedback. And the feedback is going to come from your knees, and um, hopefully the feedback says that was fine. But if it's not, then you have to make some adjustments. One would be to sit higher, and the other is not to bring your feet in so close, but let's try it on the other side. We're going to bring our right foot in. So the right foot in, comes in first, and the heel comes close to the torso, unless your knee's bothering you. It's the compression that would be bothering you. If that's the case, just take your foot a little further away. Um, and then, but if you, if you can do it, you want the heel close. And then to, to start with, we're just going to put this other foot in front. So the left foot is going to come in front. And then the heels line up, even though they're not on top of each other, they are lined up. And then I, on this side, you'll know one side, this knee, on this side, one knee comes up, which on the other side, it wasn't doing. Now, I could put something under it. And if I have to, I will. But I'm gonna try instead to sit really heavy on the your right buttock and, and just take my hand onto the thigh and press the knee down. It's not, if it works, it's great. It's not gonna hurt you to try that. Um, but if your knee won't stay down, then you get something to put under it. So it's all good. But maybe you can even hold it down using the, the hands turned the other way, which we'll do in a minute. But for right now, if you can, you're going to take that left foot and you're going to put it on top of the right, but only if that works for you. And then the heels will line up and then the toes will tuck into the right calf and thigh. And then take your hands and bring your thumb and first finger together and take your other fingers down. So now we know this and we're going to try to do it on this side. So from the hips all the way up to the armpits, lift. And then lift your um, chest and your collarbones even higher, which will engage your uh, belly button. And you want that to be long. So you want your whole front body, that skin to feel like it's just being pulled gently up from you, the leg crease, up over the pelvis, the ribs, the chest, the collarbones, and then down from the top of the shoulders toward the uh, shoulder blades, down the ribs, down the buttocks. So being as tall as you can with your hands this way, look toward your heart. Engage your triceps so that your arms, this pose is a lot about the arms. So the arms are really quite important here. So don't, don't shortchange that. Lengthen your arms, open your armpits, lift your chest up more, look toward your heart. Now turn your hands down. Now, let's get feedback again. Straighten your legs and see how they feel. So if your knees feel good, that's wonderful. 
uh, but we just always want to take good care of our knees. They don't, um, they're not cooperative if they get angry. You know, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't make nice too quickly. Now we're going to take our, if our knees are okay, and if they're not okay, um, you're going to sit up higher. But if they're okay, you're going to take your um, hand to your inner right knee, and you're going to bring that foot into what I would call Baddha Konasana. So it's Baddha Konasana, and then we're going to join the other foot in Baddha Konasana. And whenever I do this pose, or whenever I teach this pose, I say the same thing, which is the way my pose looks at this second is not the way it's going to look. Because it takes for me, and for most of us, a minute. Now, some people, they're so flexible, they just bring their legs right down to the floor, and they don't know what the problem is. But for most of us, we need to adjust ourselves or we need to create more distance between our knees. So for one thing, make sure you're not sitting too far back on your lift. You want your buttocks and maybe a little bit of your hamstrings on your, I call it a perch, so that it's not like a comfortable seat. And then I just lean forward toward my feet. And then I'm gonna, this is just the many ways to work on this, but let's try this today. Take your left forearm and put it down on your left inner knee, kind of, yeah, the inner knee part, and just push uh, and press, maybe press is a kinder word. Push sounds more aggressive than I mean, uh, because what I really want, what I want for you is not to overly engage the groin, but to feel that your leg can come down, just wherever it will. Yeah, that looks good. And then you take your other hand to your right knee, your right hand to your right knee, and you just press that down. So you're pressing both. One is with your hand, one is with your form. And engage your abdomen and just lift your spine, even though we're not sitting straight up, I know. We will in a minute. Now, now switch and put your left hand on your left knee and keep it down, hold it down best you can, and take your forearm to your right knee and really press that direction. So the two knees are getting some pressure on them to not as much to go down as to separate, as to move away from each other. Then, so now things have changed, right? So take your um, chest and lift it up, hands behind you for a second hands behind you, uh, on your um, support maybe, on the floor, whatever works for you, and just draw your feet together and your knees apart and lift your chest up and breathe. So body Kanasana is a pose that we can practice because we, during TV or, you know, just whenever, it's not that hard. You just sit on a lift and practice it. Um, so now you're going to take your hands in front and wrap them around your feet, your toes. There's different ways to do this. You can even take your hands under the balls of your feet. But when you do that, you'll notice your knees kind of uh, respond a little bit. So now use the, use the pressure into your hands to lift your chest up and broaden your knees away from each other. So lifting, 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 breathing, breathing, breathing. And now, undo all that. Take your hands to the side of your knees, the outside of your knee, and bring your legs back up and straighten your legs out. So now that was a lot of knee, that was almost more knee work than Siddhasana in a way. So just feel your knees. Just because you feel your knees doesn't mean that you've injured your knees, you know what I'm saying? But you have to pay attention to how your knees feel after you do almost anything. Now we're going to lie down on our backs. So lie down on your back and um, bring your knees in toward your chest. So just draw your knees in as close to your chest as you can, and that will definitely flatten your back. You'll see that. So the, the back flattens, the knees come in, and you hold on to your knees. And this is all, and but suppose your knees, you're still figuring them out. Take your hands behind your calves, so that right between, right in the back of your knees, you put your fingers, and then you put your fingers in the other knee that way, and just bring them in that way. That's, that's also a good way, and that doesn't compress the knee. So breathe. So look straight at the ceiling now, so that your face 
is centered to the ceiling. So before we do anything else, connect your awareness to the midline of your body. So right down the center of your face, right down the center of your forehead, nose, mouth, chin, throat, down the center of your spine. Just be in that awareness that the left side and the right side are mirrors of each other a lot of the time. And hold your belly button down. Now, put your hands beside your hips down and take your knees over your hips and your shins will be parallel to the floor. So your legs are essentially in a right angle. And um, open your toes, press through your heels, and bring your belly button down to the floor, which you're gonna need to do. This is abdominal. I don't think I'm telling you anything you haven't figured out. Take your shoulder blades into your awareness and maybe lift them up off the floor and replace them again so that they're a little further down toward your hips. In other words, your shoulder blades are moving away from the top of your shoulders. Breathe. So pulling your belly down, just working at this very uh, passive, it's passive in a way, but then you start getting what it's gonna to take to hold this and breathe and breathe. And then put your feet on the floor for a second. And then just now, you're still looking at the uh, ceiling. You're not changing that. That stays very much the same. Now bring your knees up over your hips again, your feet parallel, your shins parallel to the floor. You're in that right, uh, right angle with your legs. Your back body is on the floor, but probably not your lower back. Do you agree? Put your feet on the, on the floor for a second and your back body, your waist comes to the floor. Bring your feet up and your waist is no longer on the floor, but you still have to press your belly button toward the spine. Now, take your right leg and stretch it away from you. So your foot is coming away from you. you broaden the toes, keep your face centered to the ceiling. You'll start to feel your quadriceps a little bit more. Bring your knee back to where it was and then stretch the left leg out. So now the quadricep is quite engaged and broaden the toes and push through the heel and breathe and then bring that leg back in. And now do about four of those back and forth. So push with the right, bring it back, push with the left, push with the right, push with the left, Push with the right, push with the left, put your feet on the floor. Probably in that little exercise, you felt the connection between your torso and your legs. I'm pretty sure you did, I did. Now, uh, lift your buttocks up and then lengthen them a little bit, just soft, soft. So that when you put your sacrum back down, now it feels even, it's soft. Your waist is down a little bit. Now put your hands beside your um, hips for one second and just replace your shoulder blades as low as, as much on the floor as you can. Now take your right arm to the right, your left arm to the left, so that you are stretching your arms away from each other through the center of your chest. So the center of your chest into your hands and breathe, and now pick your feet up and just spread your legs apart. So you stretch, stretch through your heels and then bring your legs back together and bring your right knee over your left knee and then bend your knees and bring your feet toward your, um, toward your buttocks. If this is a problem for you, just keep your knees undo that keep your knees together and your feet together knees up toward the chest but if you can cross your legs then you're going to do that so now the right over the left or either they're that's or they're that way or they're together and your face is centered and your arms are going to stay very stable and your shoulder blades are down and take your knees even up further toward your chest and take your knees off toward your right knee a right elbow, sorry, 
and then just center your face. Don't, don't be too taken with the direction your knees are going. Be more aware of what's happening to your belly button and bring your belly button over toward the left. Um, or at least don't take it too far to the right. Uh, if the abdomen could respond here, it would move toward the left. It would not go with you if you could avoid that. I'm going very slow, I hope you are too. If you go too fast, uh, you lose the connection between your mind and your body. Bring your knees back up, undo that. Put your feet on the floor. You know what I'm saying? If you go too fast, it's all body and no mind, you know? So we have to slow down enough that they can connect. Now bring your legs out wide and bring your legs together, left knee over right knee, bend your knees, put your, uh, bring your feet towards your buttocks. And again, if that bothers you, just undo that and keep your knees together and your feet together. And you know how to do that. Now we're still centered. Take your knees toward the left, but you're not changing anything else. And your buttocks are, of course, gonna, the right buttocks coming up, of course, but your belly button should try to turn toward the right. Try to turn your belly button toward the right. And as far as your arms and your uh, collarbones and your head is concerned, nothing is going on. We are just stay very neutral through all that area. Just breathe. Just breathe, going slow, going slow to a place where you can still keep the right shoulder down and then come back up and then cross your legs and put your feet on the floor and roll over to the right side. And now come to your hands and knees. So come to your hands and knees, but have your hands, there is some, sometimes teachers say, have your hands right under your shoulders and you know, but but other teachers will say, um, don't do that because then it'll be too short a dog pose. So let's see what we think. Take your hands a little ahead of your shoulders. Not, not too far, but if you have them right under your shoulders, you know, that's one thing. Just maybe a couple inches ahead of your um, shoulders. And then look at your hands and make sure that they are identical, whatever, whatever that means. If you're, um, and usually you judge that from whether your index finger or your middle finger is straight, is, is facing the most forward. Uh, now lift up through the inner arms, from the inner wrist to the elbows, up to the armpits, and then lift your chest through your armpits and hold your belly button firm and breathe and come up into downward facing dog. So downward facing dog, pressing with your hands, stretching with your legs. So it starts with the arms though. You push with your hands and you push your shoulders away from your hands. That's really what you're doing because that's the first action. Your neck should stay neutral. It, for most of us, keeping our neck uh, safe is keeping your ears between your upper arms so that your shoulders lift but your neck stays pretty neutral. So press with your hands, lift your shoulders towards your buttocks. You can have your knees bent, you can have your heels up, anything that creates length in your spine. So let's all bend our knees. Let's all bend our knees for a second and push back toward our hips. That, you can feel that, the lower back will lengthen. Then if you can straighten your legs, do that. And breathe, and then come forward into plank. And this is where you decide, was my pose long enough? If you come forward and plank, and you're, you'll know. You have to have your hands under your shoulders now. You have to have your feet back where the, you can really stretch your heels back, your torso forward, your buttocks back, your chest forward. You stay in this plank, then come back to dog pose. So now, maybe your dog pose is a little longer than it was. Your heels can be up. Your knees can be bent, all of that. Breathe, really tall with our spine is long, legs are, legs are tall, bend your knees, come down. So now you might have an idea of where your hands should be. When you come forward in plank, that tells you where your hands should be, where it should, in dog pose, that tells you that. Now let's widen our knees 
And if you need blocks for your hands, get blocks. I like this. If you have any neck um, or uh, shoulder issues, probably blocks for your hands will be good. But if you have blocks for your hands, generally you want something for your head too. So I've got a blanket and I've got two blocks. Knees are as wide as you can take them toward the edge of your sticky mat. Big toes are touching. Then you reach forward for the blocks and you put your head down, if you're using blocks, and then you just are in child's pose, child's pose. So just feel your hands on the floor or the blocks. Just feel, feel them and stretch through the forearm skin and the upper arms. So just stretch up armpits, just stretch through the armpits. Buttock skin is going back and just start breathing. And now every time you exhale, bring your mind to your mid back and broaden it. This pose is long, but we want the breath in the back body too. So you're inhaling and lengthening probably and exhaling and broadening. Now come up, move that away. Come back to your hands and knees. Now, um, another, uh, another option I just want to mention, suppose you feel like that was too much on your hands, maybe it was, use a chair. That's just perfectly fine. Uh, a chair is great for what we're doing. Uh, if you're using a chair, just to, just to show them, if you're using a chair, you go from, you go from your dog pose to, to a chair plank. Chair plank is not, is, do you see the difference? Here's chair plank, here's chair up dog. Do you see the difference? Chair plank, you're, you're in a plank. So you can use a chair. I just want to say that because sometimes you think, oh, my arms are, I could use a rest. If yours could do that, otherwise, back to your hands and knees. And make your decision now, should your hands have been a little further forward? Or were they good the way you started? <laughs> and then come up into downward facing dog or chair dog and just be in this pose. So before anything else, this time, uh, press with your hands down. Of course, engage your arms into your shoulders for sure, into your torso. But lift your heels up then and try to make the upper legs taller. Sometimes if your heels come up, you can create a little more length and the inner top of your leg and the outer top of your leg. And of course, what I'm saying is lift the sit bones up, but hold the belly button firm. And then if you can bring your heels down a little bit, that's fine, whatever it works for you. And then come forward into plank. So now we're in plank. If you're on the chair, plank is good too. And in plank, you know, you're not letting your legs relax down. Your thighs are quite active and then come back to dog. So now pull your thighs back. So the thighs, you, they, you don't give them a break. The thighs really are responsible for holding this pose eventually. And now is about the time I mean by eventually. Your legs have to really kick in and really hold you back and help you and then come forward into plank. And now they're helping you too because the quadriceps are squeezing up toward the femur bone the hamstrings are moving back toward the calves, back toward the heels, chest forward, come back to downward facing dog. So downward facing dog with the longest inner arms you could possibly create and the most supportive outer arms. Breathe. And then come down and separate your knees. So a child's pose again. Now, if you want the block set up, that's great. But if not, this time, just arms outstretched. So head down. So this is what we call forward virasana because, um, well, that's what it's called. Um, child's pose is the other name for it. So just allow your back body now to, to lengthen. Feel like from the 
forehead being down, the shoulder blades are just softly moving back, and the skin on the shoulder blades. Your shoulder blades don't do too much, the skin. So even from the back body, your back is moving toward your hips, and your side body is as long as it can be, and breathe, and breathe. Now, uh, take your left hand and sneak it under your right arm, so your palm can be up or down. For me, I have to take my palm down to sort of inch it away from the center. And so the right arm now gets a really nice long stretch. Create more of a stretch on your right side body and you're almost turning toward the right a little bit and then inch your hand further forward on the right side. And then come back to center and take your left hand as long as your right hand is child's pose. Forward be awesome. Now take your right hand under your left arm, and so you're walking your hand away from the, the right side of you, and your left hand can stretch a little further forward, perhaps. You're turning toward your left hand with your torso, but your left hand just keeps walking further, further forward. And then undo that and replace your right hand at the same distance that your left hand is. And now come back to your hands and knees. Now take, um, take your hands wide to the edge of your sticky mat and take your feet wide to the edge of your sticky mat and then come up into a nice wide dog pose. So just a nice long wide dog pose. So from the little finger side of the hand to the hips, from the um, center of your spine, is from the spine toward the pubis, toward the, and then the buttock skin is moving away from the shoulders. Just breathe, 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 breathe. And then come down. Now be in child's pose again. So child's pose with your head on the floor or on a support, whatever you need. But what we're going to do once we get to child's pose is we're going to keep our buttocks down and our knees the same, and we're going to start walking our hands over to the right side and drawing our torso then so a little more over the right thigh. Uh, maybe not your entire torso because you have to keep your left buttock down. But maybe you can get as far as possible and then just stretch out through your arms, stretch out through both arms. Um, you're certainly in a side curve now, although you don't, you don't maybe think of it that way, but this is a side curve, and keep your left bite down. If you can walk your hands a little further to the right, you can try that. And breathe. And now walk your hands back to center, and walk them the other way. So now we're walking them over to the left, right buttock down. Just maybe trying to get the torso over the knees, the left thigh that is, the left quadricep toward the knee, and then the hands move to the left. If you can, whatever, you, but keep the right buttock down. And then come back to center. And, and come up, and come up. <laughs> so we've been down, we've been in dog pose, so now you're completely different in mentally than you were, I am sure. Now it's time for um, an inversion of some kind. So um, Shirshasana is, um, if you have a Shirshasana practice, set yourself up for um, regular headstand um, at the wall or in the center of the room, however you do it. If you are not doing Shishasana, and there's many reasons you might not be doing that, legs up the wall is an awesome thing to do. Or um, do uh, dolphin pose, or you know, you have maybe have a way that you're doing it. So come into your inversion. Um, you can also do a handstand, I suppose. Anything that gets you upside down. That's really what we're after, is we want to be upside down. We want our legs to be up and our head to be down in one version of this or another. And there's so many good options.
Thank goodness, isn't it? Because you'd be so sorry if some of the poses you like and then you don't do them you, for a minute or two, then you have an option. It's great. If your option is to go up into um, headstand, then you're up. I can see a few of you in dolphin and that looks really good, but dolphin pose is hard. So I don't expect you to stay in dolphin pose forever. You probably have to come up and down through dolphin pose. Um, at least that's mostly the case. Yeah, that, that's what I think looks good for dolphin, not to try to do too much. Legs up the wall is just another really great one. Um, so, Polly, your headstand looks great. Riley, that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, nice. I can't see some of you, so if I'm not talking to you, it's just that I can't see you because <laughs> you're at a wall or something. <laughs> nice, though. Everybody looks good. And, and being upside down is, is great, but be sure you're breathing. Be sure if you're in headstand, you're lifting your shoulders and pressing down with your um, forearms. And if you're in dolphin, all the same. If legs are up the wall, keep enjoying. And breathe, and breathe. So Bridget, that looks really good. Bring your ribs back slightly. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it, good. Good, very nice, very nice. Good, so now we're, we're, now we're making decisions. Now we're making decisions because this is an all levels class. If you're ready to come down, at any time you should come down. So if you're ready to come down, you come down. If you want to stay another minute, then you're going to stay another minute. And a minute in yoga time is not like nothing. <laughs> when they say, oh, it's just a minute, it's like, uh huh? Good. But a minute of, of length, whatever your choice, and be sure you're breathing. Be sure you're breathing. Mm -hmm. Ed, that looks good. That looks good, Ed. I can see you. Saying that looks good too, and your legs are separate. I, I guess that, that's, that they look really even though. That's good. That's good. Nice. Very good. So now, if you are ready, if you are ready, you're going to start coming down. If you're in heads down, the forearms are very important when you come down. You press strongly with your forearms when you come down. It's very good for your back then. And then once you get done with your inversion, when you're out of your inversion, whatever it was, then of course it's child's pose. So bring yourself to, um, to child's pose. And child's pose in this case is purely for rest, not as much for stretch. And um, stretch certainly, it's restoring the blood pressure, um, which is, is never really not a problem, but we do say that, and, and lowers and lengthens the lower back. And it, so it's just a wonderful way to come out of your inversion. But now carefully come up and find your, um, the things that you were sitting on before. So we're just going, we're going to sit for a minute and do something and then we're going to be standing. So um, just for a second, get your blankets that you were sitting on and sit down in um, simple cross leg, in your cross leg position. So, um, so we've been, so re-lengthen your spine there. Anytime you make any kind of adjustment, which is what's so interesting, is how much your spine just does what it's going to do. And then you have to say to it, no, I really, really prefer if the spine is moving straight, is moving up, and then slightly forward toward the front body. Because in our, um, in our computer driving, cooking, cleaning world, our back body move, has to move back. Our back body has to move back to lift our arms forward, but now we're going to undo that. We're just undoing that. We're saying, not always. In this case, I'm trying to draw my spine forward toward my chest. Now, 
take your um, left hand down to the floor so that your left hand is down and take your right hand onto your waist and point your elbow away from your armpit. So you're really lengthening your upper arm on the right side and your left hand is down and you now lengthen the left side of your torso from the hip to the armpit even though there's a curve and then take your uh, right arm up and take your right arm over but this is just a if you still want to keep your hand on your waist that's fine sometimes people um, don't get as much out of this this because their shoulders don't like it so we're just stretching we're stretching the skin from our hip to our right fingertips so and it's, it's a lot about awareness. It's a lot about awareness because it, you can't force this. You can only encourage this. And the encouragement comes from your left torso being long and tall and curved. And then come back to center. And now take your right hand down. So the, the left arm can either go on your waist, and we start this way anyway. I like this because I feel here like I'm really engaging the right side body pretty intelligently, and I know to keep the left buttock down, I'm mirroring you, and then stretch your other arm up. Now that, now that your left arm can come up, that's just great. And then if it can come up, start taking it over your head. And again, the awareness that you're getting on your side body is what's important here. And you certainly are stretching enough. It isn't that you don't know how to stretch. It's where is there a little teeny tiny bit more? Is it through the armpit? Is it right through the, the space between your waist and your ribs? And then don't forget your right side body is helping you so much by lengthening as it's curving. And then come back to center. And now take your uh, legs to the left, take the other cross, whatever that was. Um, and again, left hand, left hand down, right arm up and over, or hand on the waist. So it's the curving of the side body. And then the arm goes over. And I think I've told you, because um, I've thought about it why we're doing so much side curving and why are we doing so much side curving because joe is doing side curving and um, also i learned this in another way but bring your um, right hand down and your left arm up but what she says and um, i think this is so important is that these side curves that we're doing really help every other curve of your back so it isn't just and this is so true of yoga you can work on one aspect of your body and it helps other things. It's really nice. Now we're going to stand up, take the support away, um, have blocks near you. We will use blocks, but not right now. So I want my blocks around. And then we're going to take our, uh, come into um, Tadasana, but I want you to have either a wedge or a blanket that's folded up. So I have a wedge. <laughs> and I just want to put my, the balls of my feet on the wedge and my heels down. It's called the old calf stretching. Now, if you don't have a wedge, because a lot of us don't, but some of us do, then you take that blanket, one of them that you were sitting on, and you put the balls of your feet on that. Hey, that's even nicer because it's soft. So whichever you're doing, then come right back up over your heels, come back towards your heels and lengthen your quadriceps. And your calves, of course, are getting a stretch because this is called calf stretching. And you know, it used to be that we had calf stretchers at the studio. And people would come in, and before they started their practice, they would always be on the calf stretchers. Some of you longtime students, I know you remember that. Uh, then we don't do that so much. But I think it's good to stretch our calves. Because when you stretch your calves, your, your quadriceps are partners to that action. Don't you feel that? Calves going down, your quadriceps get quite active. Bring your arms up over your head if you can. If you don't want to do that, take your arms and turn your thumbs back. So either way, arms up or hands down, thumbs back, and then bring your arms down 
and step off of that. So it always a ton of calf stretching, but just a little bit. And now we're going to take our legs wide. So wide is um, very individual, isn't it? What is wide for one person is maybe not wide for another. I want to do, put your hands on your hips and just, just be here for a minute. It takes a minute in wide legs to really feel even through both sides of your body, I think. So what I want to do now is just bend your left knee a little bit and push all the weight you can into your right foot. I'm mirroring you. Just put every ounce you can into the right foot. You're leaning that direction a little bit. You're just pushing. And then keep that and push into the left foot just the same amount. Now, my, now, if you're like me, your legs feel a little more connected to the torso and they're doing the same thing. Lift your chest, elbows toward each other, shoulder skin down, breathe. And now we're gonna come forward from the crease of, of our legs and we're gonna put our hands under our shoulders and lift our chest forward. We're not gonna bring our head down so don't worry about having support, at the moment anyway. So hands are under the shoulders, legs are wide, feel the pressure into both feet and lift your chest forward. So we're lifting our chest forward. We're trying to create this length in our spine. And so now, just with your feet really firm, bring your hands off the floor, if you can, back to your hips. And then bring your legs together for a minute or toward each other. So he, we're going to just do one little thing that's going to show us something about our spine before we do the very same thing again. So take your feet hip width apart. I'm going to go sideways so you can see. I'm going to put my feet hip width apart. I'm going to put my hands on my elbows and be as tall as I, I put my hands on my hips and my elbows are gonna go down and toward each other. But then I'm gonna come halfway down and I'm gonna put my hands on my shins. And when I do that, I'm gonna notice the tendency to um, overstretch the back of my knees. So don't overstretch the back of your knees. You feel like your hands are on your shins for pressure, but you're not pressing your knees back too far. Lift your quadriceps up Lift your chest forward. Lift your chest forward. Um, so look down at the floor. Your neck is just an extension of your spine. Take your shoulder skin back towards your buttocks. Your hamstrings are feeling it, I know. So you can bend your knees a little bit. But really use this opportunity to lengthen from the tailbone to the top of the cervical spine. And just lengthen, 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 lengthen. And you're in, right in the mid-back, which is so tight, just lengthen a little more. Just lengthen a little more. And then come up. And then take your legs wide again. So same thing, but we have to find a way to isolate the spine from the action of the legs. The legs are the supporting cast here. The spine is the, going to be the star. And so put your hands on your hips, lift your chest, come down, hands under the shoulders, lift your chest through your upper arms best you can best you can, and then take your hands forward. So like a dog pose, except not so much weight in your hands. So your hands come forward, your torso is long, and now take your spine toward your front body. Take your spine toward your front body. Draw your chest forward, but try to take your spine toward your front body and breathe so that your spine gets longer and longer and longer, but more hidden from view. And now walk your hands back and bring them under your shoulders again and lift your chest forward. So just lift your chest forward. Don't you see how this is? You have to keep your shoulders very uh, soft, but engaged back and your neck soft, but engaged forward. So don't overdo any of that. Now, if you need to walk your feet in, do, but if you can bring your hands up off the floor and put your hands on your hips, do that. And then walk your feet together. Tadasana.
Now get a blanket, so we have blankets, and put your blanket down on your sticky mat so that it is right in the center. And so the, the, we're gonna come to our shins, but I want you to have a block. So come to your shins, so you're coming up onto your knees and your shins. Um, and I know that this is a challenge for some of our knees um, and ankles especially. So if your ankles, if you feel like your ankles cannot press down, uh, which you know you would want, uh, then something you could do is you could roll up your, you could create just a little bit of a uh, roll in the blanket for your ankles to be over. I'm thinking more of the men. Most women, for some reason, and I, I could speculate, and that might involve wearing high heels, but most women have an easier time with their ankles than men do. So, just do what you can do to be on your shins, to be on your knees, and you've got the block. Put your hands on your waist, lift your chest up. So you should feel from the knees to the chest really long, and then bend on, I'm going to mirror you. I should remember this. I'm going to mirror you. <laughs> so you're going to take your right foot and you're going to bend your right knee and you're going to have your right heel in line with your left knee. And then naturally, naturally, because we did all this, we turn toward the right with our torso. Of course, it's natural. But that's not the way we want it to go. So take your hand, your right hand to the inner right knee and just move your torso away from that action, but be taller. Be taller through the left side body. Be taller through the left side body. That's good. Okay, now bring your hand down to that block right in front of your foot. So now this is gonna remind you of that side stretching we were doing. So your hand is down on the block in front of your foot. That, or kind of ankle more maybe, that gives you a chance to put your elbow into your knee and you hold your knee back and draw your buttock forward. In other words, on the right side, you know the buttock went back in space and now you want to draw it forward and you have to make yourself taller to do that. You have to make your left side body taller to get your right buttock in line. And then take your uh, hand on your left hand and stretch it out. Now that's of course if that's available. You can keep your hand on your waist, no problem. You're in the curve already. But if you can do this, then you're gonna take your arm over. And when you take your arm over, you're curving both sides of your torso. Obviously the left side is getting the most obvious curve, but the right side needs to curve inward to support that. And breathe. Buttocks should be as level as you can make them. Side bodies both tall, breathe, and come back to center. Bring that knee down. Now move your block. Just be on your knees for a second, be in the center, just be in the center for a second because we were doing something. Now we're gonna do the other side. So bring your left foot out and the knee is bent. So the, you know, you would, it's just as best you can, the ankle right over the knee, and also the left heel in line with the right knee. That, those are the, that's the Iyengar yoga aspect of it. Now put your hands on the inner left knee and draw your left buttock down and turn your torso away from that action and get as tall as you can on the right side body. To me, you've, that makes huge difference in how this pose is gonna go, that I've already engaged. It's the right side body, yeah, the right side body. And lift your arm up if you can then. Lift your arm up if you, and put your hand on the block. I should have said that. Put your hand on the block, knee into the thigh. 
your knee into the, the old thigh, and then take your arm over your head, but curve both sides of your body. Curve both sides of your body and breathe. So, you know, you have to think about your neck. So you may make your neck comfortable um, and just stretch. And then come back to center. <clears throat> and now you can sit back on your heels maybe, or you can sit and cross legs for a second. The block is not going to be needed now, but we just want to kind of engage our uh, mind into our center body. So be in your center body, whether you're sitting in cross legs or if you're sitting back on your heels, just engage your awareness to your center body, which includes the spine and the center of your face, the back of your head, the back of your neck, shoulder blades even, shoulder blades going down and come back up to your knees. And now we're going to take our um, left foot to the left. Is that the way we did it? <laughs> In my mind. Okay, so you're gonna stretch your left leg out. And then this is the deal. Uh, you want pressure into your foot, uh, and that, that your left foot. You don't want it to be light. Uh, so somehow, You've got to get the leg straight and the foot down. Um, and when we were in India, uh, you know, the, the correct pose is to have your leg straight out of your hip with your feet straight. But if you can't do that and keep pressure into your foot, then you can, according to Gita, take your uh, left foot forward, uh, the, the metatarsal, so that you, and you'll see that that helps you. So do whatever you can. The other option is to put a little blanket under the metatarsal. I just want you to feel like you've got pressure into that foot and stretch your arms. So now you're on one knee, your right knee, your left leg is stretching, your arms are stretching, you're on your right knee, your left leg is out, and you're going to turn your palms up. You're going to turn your palms up and stretch through your chest into your hands. And now we're gonna curve our torso. But keep your, um, keep your right hip stable over your knee and then bring your uh, left hand down. And then the other arm, my best advice on this is to stretch your other arm away for quite a while. I mean, in, while we're going lower with our left hand, our right arm just stretches away from that. It, you know, just to help you. So your right arm stretches away, your left hand goes lower towards your ankle. I know some of you, I know Helen, you can come into the complete and total pose. Most of us are just hanging on by a thin thread of bow. So we're going to stretch our arm over our head now. The right arm is going to come over our head. And you know, just bring your uh, right hand down to your left. I can't do that, but I know Helen can, but don't do anything that you'll regret later as your parents told you many times, and then come back up. Oh, that was a nice stretch. I hope you enjoyed that. Bring your uh, left knee back down, left shin back down. Take your right leg out. Interesting, um, in yoga, part of the yoga package of benefits comes your awareness into differences between the two sides, doesn't it? So this might be really easy for you to stretch your foot down, but you can have your foot raise the metatarsal on a little something, or take your metatarsal on the right foot just slightly forward. And then your right leg is really long, and your left torso is really long, and stretch your arms and turn your palms up. So you're stretching through the inner armpits, outer armpits, Feel like the arms are a big part of this pose, which they are, and breathe. Now we're going to keep the left arm stretching away from us as we start taking the right hand down. And the hand can only go where it will go, so you have to go slow. I think this is a good example of mind-body. Go slow enough that your mind and your body can connect through the spine, through the curve in your spine, so you're curving your spine. Thus, the right side body is curving, but the left is the more obvious curve. And then take your left arm over your head if you can, 
and you're bringing your hands toward each other, but just as you can, because you still have to hold everything back with the right inner leg and breathe. And then come back up. And bring your knee down and sit back for a second. So these curves on our side body, you might notice them. You can do other things more easily too. Uh, but just be here for a second. Just breathe, be in the midline. Isn't it interesting to go into a pose that is so much one way and yet you're still in the midline? And how is that? You know, just think about that. Let's do it one more time. Come up and just think about your midline, which goes from the inner legs up to the spine, to the center of your face. And then just take your hands behind you and then clasp your hands and roll your shoulders back and down and hold your belly button back. And then put your hands on your waist and then take your left leg out. So this time, the key here is the heel in line with the knee. If your heel is further forward or back, that changes the rotation of the hip and or the femur in the hip socket. What you really want to be as tall as you can on your right side body. And then be aware of the, the external rotation of the thigh, left thigh into the hip socket. And then stretching the leg up, bring your arms up, turn your palms up. So the arms here are very important. And now the side body is pretty equally long, trying to keep it equally long. We're gonna to try to keep it equally long even when we start doing something very different. Think of the midline, right down the center of your spine. Bring your left hand down. Keep thinking of the midline which is now going with you <laughs> as you go toward the left with your hand and your other arm comes over and all the weight now seems to be going to the left side except the right knee, the right hip, the right thigh. Everything is so strong on that side, the midline is maintained. And then come back up. See, none of us tipped over. We know how to maintain that midline and keep the weight on the other side. Let's take our right leg out and then see how that goes this time. You may still have to make all sorts of adjustments to keep that leg straight and weight in your foot. You don't want to be too light on that uh, right foot. You want to have some weight there. And then stretch your arms, turn your palms up. So now the arms are such a huge part, but be tall through the spine, through the side body, both sides, shoulders are relaxing down. Keep your uh, left arm really stretching and bring your right hand down and toward your ankle or wherever it's gonna go. Uh, you can't force this. It's more like a conversation between your side body and your hand. And then bring your other arm over and breathe. Your right side body is curving, but it's the left side body we feel the most. And breathe. Midline is maintained. The left knee, the left hip, the left thigh, very strong. And then come back up. If you think about it, that's a lot the way our standing poses are. The back leg is usually holding the midline so strong. The front leg's more passive. Okay, stand up. Take the blanket away. Don't, don't take it too far away, but take it away. And now come and have a block again. So now we're going to have a block. And we're going to have a block to our right side. And stretch your legs. Stretch your legs. And then you might want to go through that very same process of getting both feet evenly down. Maybe now they just feel completely even. That's great. But you want them to feel even. You don't want one, way, one to feel different than the other. I mean amount of weight into your feet and also where the weight is. So think of 50% of the weight of your body going toward the left leg and 50% going toward the right leg. That is the, the way to think about this and stretch your arms. 
So stretch your arms and breathe, if you can. You can always keep your hands on your hips. I want to give you that option. But your arms will stretch, if not. Now push strongly into your left leg and turn your right leg 90. And then you're going to take your uh, left heel out a little bit. So your left heel comes out a little bit. And what you'd like to do is be straight up over your hips with your torso, even though your right leg is turned. I understand that. Now, bend your right knee into a square and get that block and put your right hand down on the block and put your elbow into your, um, in, into your inner knee thigh area and, and then turn your torso away from that. So your right hand is down, your right knee is bent, your left leg is the, very strong. You should feel the more weight almost in your left leg than your right, even though the, all the weight is going to the right, but the left leg is that strong. Now if you can, you're gonna lift your arm straight up. But when you do that, don't forget to turn your torso. Your arm comes up, but your torso turns as well. Breathe, press into the back leg, take your arm over your head. Stretch your arm over your head. Parsva Konasana to the right. Left leg maintaining the midline. Left leg maintaining the weight distribution. And breathe. And then come back up. So straighten your front leg. Turn your front leg in, your front foot in, and come back to the center. And center yourself, because wasn't that a huge, it's weight distribution in yoga always, how to do a pose to one side and maintain the integrity of the other side. Now the integrity is going to stay in the right foot, the right leg, and so we're going to move the block, if you didn't already, and turn your... Turn your uh, left leg 90 and turn your right heel out. That's an interesting thing too. Sometimes we say turn the heel out and then turn the leg, and sometimes we say turn the leg and then turn the heel. It's all good as long as we do both. So one heel is slightly out on the right side, the left leg turn 90, stretch your arms, bend your left knee into what you think is a square, <laughs> bring your hand down, Bring your other hand to your waist for a second, just for a second, and then suppress the elbow into your um, inner knee, and then stretch your arm up. That's only if it's available. You can always keep your hand on your waist because that's good too. So the arm is going away from you though, if you can, and then come a little deeper in the square if you can, and take your arm over your head. So you're stretching from your right foot to your right hand, and you're stretching the side body on the right side, now take the left hip back away from the knee. Uh, we're not trying to take the uh, right side any differently, but we're trying to create some awareness into the left torso. It's very good, and breathe. And then we're gonna come back up. So straighten your front leg, turn your foot to the center, and walk your feet in. Now, uh, some form of shoulder stand, either a regular shoulder stand with three blankets, belt, bolster, chair, whatever you need, or another wonderful option is a um, Viprita Karani. And so if you're having any neck, shoulder, back issues at all, and you think, well, what would be better for me would be a uh, V-Creator Karani where your buttocks are up on a bolster and maybe even onto a blanket on top of the bolster to create more height. So I just want to give you that option. If you feel like this is better for you today, go for that. It's a wonderful, wonderful pose. And it's in the shoulder stand family. They're all, they all do the same thing. Because shoulder stand is, has more benefits than almost any pose. If you read the light on yoga and you read all the benefits of shoulder stand, you think, well, I should be doing this every day. And you should, you, and you will like it better the more you do it. But shoulder stand is but one variation of shoulder stand. You can do Satchabandha, of course, too. You could do Satchabandha if you want to on a block. But whatever your choice, set yourself up 
set yourself up. <clears throat> set yourself up into your, whatever decision you've made. I'm kind of trying to look at what decisions you've made um, because, because I care about you and I'm watching you. So, oh, don't I think that's a good choice. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. Jackie, that looks good. And Riley, you're already in. That looks good, Riley. Shoulder stand looks good for you. Um, now, Delton, just to tell you, you know, your knees could be bent or straight. So, either, you know, you can go back and forth. Sometimes if you're, if you're in um, Setubanda, it just, it's a little harder in some ways than shoulder stand because you don't have your legs up over your head. So if you are in Setubanda, you can take your legs up over your hips too, and that might feel good. So if you're in shoulder stand, you've either come to Halasana and you've gone back up into it. Mary Helmick, I like that look for your chair shoulder stand. That looks good. Pam, I like, you've got quite a bit of height under your hips. That looks good. Teresa, beautiful. Helen, that looks good. So you're on your block because, of course, that's the way you do it. Are you even on your block, though, Helen? Check your buttock weight. Check your buttock weight. It looked to me like your legs were wandering a just teeny tiny bit. Yeah, good, better, better. Okay. Very nice, you guys. So shoulder stand, why is it so important? Because it works, because it's an inversion. Inversions are so important to us. And because it works on the inner organs almost like none other. So you've got this opportunity to be upside down, but you've got a little bit of support thanks to your shoulders. So it's different than headstand, but they are companion poses. Headstand and shoulder stand are the two most important poses, so they say. And headstand refers to the king, or to the father and shoulder stand to the queen or to the mother. And so you can see that shoulder stand is a little more nurturing or could be. So whatever your choice here, if you're in shoulder stand now, be sure to keep walking your hands down toward your shoulders a little more. Yeah, and that, you know, but I think that looks so good. I think that looks so good. Those of you who are in traditional shoulder stand, when you did that, that took your legs back in line with your hips better. You know, you can imagine that that's the action of that. Um, so breathe, so breathe. I can't see everybody, but who everybody I can see looks really good. Helen, that looks perfectly level now. Good. Mary R, you look good with your legs up the wall like that. That looks pretty. Yeah, very nice, you guys, very nice. Now, everybody start coming down, whatever that means for you. If you're on the, at the wall, you bend your knees and you push yourself off the bolster and then you roll to the right. If you're in uh, Sechubandi, you take the block away slowly and you lengthen your lower back. If you're coming down from shoulder stand, you come down and you take your shoulders off that lift, but you keep your chest lifted on the lift or your back body. So there's all sorts of ways to come out of that. And of course, halasana out is the way to come out of the pose usually if you're in traditional shoulder stand. So then uh, a child's pose, child's pose. So in your child's pose, just extend your side body, lengthen your lower back. Just feel really comfortable. Just do whatever it takes to restore all of your uh, length of your back. Your head feels calm. Everything feels calm. And then um, after that, come up, come up. And let's, um, let's sit on a lift, like a couple of blankets at least. And if you are, um, if, if that 
is if you don't like to do a twist sitting on two blankets or three, then sit on a chair. You know, if you have a chair, uh, you can always do what we call a chair twist, which is so lovely. So don't worry if you don't like the, if you don't like being on the blankets or on the floor as it is. So we're going to sit on two blankets and I'm going to get there too. One of the things that's kind of funny about these Zoom classes is trying to get your props in order when you're the student or even when you're the teacher. It's like, oh my goodness, she said do this and I can't find my props. Okay, so we're sitting up on our lift if we're on a chair. If we're on a chair, um, just to remind you, I'm just going to say that we should, re we always remember this. But it's a, it's a beautiful way to do a twist, but you do sit sideways on the chair. So if that's your choice, you're sitting sideways on your chair. But otherwise, you're sitting on blankets. So your legs are straight and you're looking at them. And you're making all the adjustments necessary with your buttock flesh to come right to the center of your, the sit bones are evenly down. And the midpoint of your body, the head, the chest, the ribs, the pelvis through the inner legs. And so really think about the midline of your body right now as being so important. And what's going on on either side is so important. And bring your right knee up. So bring your right knee up. Now, ideally, you bring your heel as close to your hips as you can, ideally. But that's, of course, a knee situation, so you do what's right for you. But immediately when we did that, the left leg just went, who cares? But you know the left leg does care. So hold on to your right chin and strengthen your inner leg to your inner foot on the left side. And then sit up as tall as you can. Sit up as tall as you can. And then take your um, left hand to your right knee and take your right hand behind you and just move the uh, right knee over the midline. Just move it over the midline. And then, then use everything you can to get the elbow over the knee or hold on to the knee if that's better for you. But if you can take the elbow over, then you start twisting and you try trying to get, well, you're trying to get your left armpit down to your other right knee. But if you're like me, that's going to take a while. So you're getting as low as you can with your elbow down, and your hand is up. Your outstretched left leg is really conscious, and start turning, lifting your spine first, though. Lift your spine first, and then start turning. So your best twist comes from a very lengthened spine, where each vertebra is moving from the other and breathe. So you're turning toward the right, but I am I would look at my left foot for a second and make sure that left leg is really engaged and then turn your ribs away from that action and then turn your head in line with your chest. If that's available to you, press your, uh, press your uh, right foot down. And then come back to center. I hope you can hear the dog chorus that we've got. <laughs> we've got so many dogs in our neighborhood, and there's this fire siren, and oh my gosh, they're singing. They are, I mean, there must be 10 of them, and they just get out and howl. We love that. Bring your left knee up. Our dog doesn't howl, and I don't think you can teach a dog to howl if they just don't want to howl. <laughs> so your left foot is down, your left knee is bent. Holding onto your left shin, stretching out through your right leg, really tall, really tall, best you can. And then hold on to the knee with your right hand and move it across the midline. This is only one way to get into the pose. We know that, right? There's other ways to get into the pose too. But then I'm going to take my elbow across the knee if I can. So try to get your elbow over the knee if you can. And then even more so, try to get the elbow lower if you can. And as you're going, you're turning toward the left, toward the left. So your elbow comes as low as you can, your hand behind you, 
Feel weight on your left foot. Feel weight on your left foot. Lift your spine up. Look toward your right foot for a moment, but then turn your head in line with your chest and lift your spine up tall and breathe and twist. Breathe and twist. And then undo and, and um, Shavasana. So um, whatever support you need, we, we uh, of course have the wall if you'd like to put your legs up the wall. We have blankets, we have bolster, there's maybe a chair. Be as comfortable as you can be. Make sure your head is supported um, enough because we're all different. You know, some of us don't use anything for our head because we don't need it, but most of us do. And so most of us use what I would call um, a headstand size blanket under our head and our neck. Um, so whatever support you've got under your head, have it under your neck too. But I'm not saying that you're gonna press your neck down. I'm just saying the neck is gonna have some support under it. Your neck will not feel like it's pressing onto that support. Your head is down, but your neck is just supported and probably just, just soft, she's feeling it soft. And then broaden right across your chest. So whatever you, whatever decision you've made on relaxation, make sure that your lower back is lengthened away from your shoulders. And make sure that you get your shoulders down, blades down as best you can, so that they feel like they're at least even and as much weight on them as you can put. And then just breathe. You're, you're, there will be a little curve in your lower back, unless your legs are up the wall. If your legs are up the wall, there won't be a curve. If your legs are on a chair, there won't be a curve. But if you're just lying with your legs flat, there will be a curve in your lower, a little one in your lower back. And then just broaden right across the, from the center of your body, from the middle line of your body, that we've been talking about all class, just broaden and soften toward the edges of your body. So right across the center of your face, from the center of your forehead, nose, mouth, and chin, just feel like the skin, the cheekbones, the jawbone, the, sh the forehead, every, the skin just moves over those surfaces toward the edge of your body, just down. So it's a very draping action. And put your tongue on the lower palate. Rest your tongue on the lower palate so that you're very soft through the face. Soft through the face, the jaw, the throat, the neck. And then broaden right across your collarbones toward the edges of your arms, toward the upper arms, toward the edges of your shoulders, upper arms. Just broaden. So the action in, um, in Shavasana is so much broadening so much about softening. It's not about working, it's not about stretching, it's about now taking all those hormones, neurotransmitters, all the things that have been generated in your practice, because every part of your body is involved, from your heart and lungs to your kidneys, to your liver, to your stomach, to your intestines, everything, everything. And, not, and so a lot of energy got created through the central nervous system, through the bloodstream, and now you just reap the benefits of that because it all comes back into your central nervous system now. But the action of the body is to broaden and to soften. Just let your body soften, very soft. And then the breathing, so nice, so nice. Just a nice inhale and a very soft exhale. So feel just as, as soft as you can in your breathing as you are in your, um, in your body. So this is where our body and our mind join in Shavasana. They soften together away from the center toward the edges and down, the back body down the front body draping, breathing, breathing.
Now gradually begin to bring your awareness to the inhale. Uh, we talked about the length and exhale, but now bring your awareness to your inhale and lengthen and deepen the inhale just a little bit though. We're not in any hurry. We just want to recognize that we're going to come to a more active sitting position in a second. So we're going to ready our lungs for that. So breathe a little deeper, just slightly deeper inhale, slightly longer exhale. And take your hands, bend your elbows, and put the hands on the abdomen and thank your body. So when your hands are on your abdomen and your elbows are on the floor, just notice how soft your, your torso feels, how, how nice and long your back feels. And then bend your knees and roll over to the right side. So if your legs are up the wall, you know, you just come down and bend your knees and roll over. And then just be there for a moment. Open and close your eyes. And then look down toward the floor and use the strength of your arms. So you're really going to push with your hands, strengthen your arms, use the strength of your arms, and come up. So we're coming back up to a seated position. It was where we started. We're coming right back to where we started. Bring your hands in prayer. Namaste. I hope you have a wonderful day.